like to turn to our special segments uh, in the show and introduce Rick and Maureen Hunter of Hunter Line Models. Uh, and they're going to uh, talk about their Hunter Line weathering projects. So Rick, Maureen, welcome. Turn it over to you guys. Hi. Hi. We are here. Good. <laughs> <Cheers. I understand. laughs> we just have to do a few little clicks here. Okay. All right. One of the, uh, what we want to do tonight, uh, in the past few weeks, we've been uh, trying to demonstrate what our weathering mix will do. And we made the weathering mix for our kits, which are all wood. So all the, uh, our colors have been developed for wood. And back, oh, maybe about eight, 10 years ago, one of our dealers come back and said, you ever tried it on plastic? And I said, no, we're not plastic people. So we're on wood people. And so one of the things about uh, doing it on styrene or any types of the plastics, uh, one of the uh, chemical features of it is usually a plastic has uh, the releasing agent on it. And to do a good job, you should be cleaning that all off before you do anything. Not with an alcohol base. The alcohol will dissolve the releasing agent and put the color on all at once. So you can just do it quickly. So what Maureen wants to show right now is this is uh, just a cheap, cheap uh, model, a uh, box car, uh, no, a gondola. And you can see what this side looks like. Here's what it started as. Mm -hmm. okay. a cheap little basic car, and I'm just gonna weather it up a little bit. I've got um, my creosote black weather mix. And I'm going to take it straight from the bottle. Should have my uh, gloves on, but I'm just going to put a coat, one coat over the whole thing, just very quickly. Doesn't take long. You can do, use this too um, in conjunction with pan pastels, and it really comes out great. I haven't got a sample of that. Um, if you go to our website, um, there is a link to a YouTube of a gentleman that um, does this to his box cars and any kind of plastic cars. And he'll put the uh, black on first and um, then use the pan pastels as well. It really comes out nice. So you just put that first coat on. Now, usually I would let that dry up a little bit, but you can, I don't know if you can see that. So um, even with just with that first coat, um, you can see it just tones it down a little bit. And then what I would do is I'd go along the top, straight bottle. I don't know where I should hold that there. And let it kind of drizzle down. It kind of just goes along the seams of that car and it, um, highlights all those little rivets. You can actually count the rivets if you want. <laughs> <laughs> then you can uh, turn the car the other way and I'd go from the bottom and let it kind of drizzle down from the bottom as well. get it from that sheen there. There, okay. Um, so the important thing is to let it dry, of course, in between those coats and it's taking a little bit here to dry. But then you can just do some more dry brushing, put that um, brush into the bottle, dab a little bit off onto a paper towel and uh, just go for it. You probably want it dirtier up from the bottom. So I would just keep adding layers and you can also use uh, one of the browns or any other color that you would like and uh, add that up from the bottom as well. Okay. That'll, that'll take a good five minutes to dry. That's the beauty of alcohol, it dries quick. But it's, it's just a quick and easy way to just kind of dirty up those cars. And then that's, it can come to turn out something like that. 
I'm Rick. Yeah. Jerry's asking, could you dilute the weathering mix to make the weathering a little more subtle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, by all means. Just with the alcohol. Yeah, do not use water to dilute it. You have to use uh, at least 70% alcohol to, to uh, dilute it. And, and, and that'll give you a different uh, tone to it too. For sure, you could, um, and maybe start with the light gray. That would be a perfect color to start with. This is, um, this is great to just show you here on that light blue, how, um, how it can come out. But if you use the light gray, yeah, it would um, be a lot more subtle. And you can also afterwards, if you take one of our pigments, like say maybe the white um, or the shale or the, or the cement, and you could take your brush, put it in, this is white that I'm using here, um, stick it, oh, this one's almost finished, stick it in the uh, bottle and then um, dab off a lot of it onto a paper towel. And then just take the flat side of your brush and just maybe dab it you know, here and there. Just adds another dimension to it as well. What um, Maureen means by a pigment, uh, we wanted to develop putting a light stain on top of a dark stain. So the only way you can do that is to actually add a pigment, uh, which is a paint, okay? And so we mix the paint and the alcohol and the colors, and then you can go over a darker color. Yeah, you just have to have fun and play around with it. Use your imagination. So because we, uh, we're told to try it with plastic, we decided to try it with a lot of other medians. Um, oh, I've got this little- Oh yeah, okay. You go for the little plastic one I'll just, again. I'll just show you this. This is just a little house that um, was an old uh, plastic building that just had those etched in bricks. If you see that here, all the, the um, uh, reddish color bricks that are just engraved into that. What I did is I took some of my pigments and I, I just put it over top of those bricks. I'll show you, I'll use the white because it stands out and you'll be able to see it wet better. So you just take it and just put it over all the building. If you've got a large building, don't do the whole thing. Just do part of it at a time because you want to wipe it off as quickly as you can. So just slap it on and then take a paper towel or a sponge, a small sponge if you have, and just wipe it off. Don't let it sit on too long. But you can see how it, it oozes right into those uh, the uh, cracks to make the mortar. So there's white. Um, this this side I had done before, and that is uh, the cement color. This one is the shale, and that's a, that's a white like I just used. And then afterwards, you can also go around and use your maybe light gray or your black as a wash and just, um, oh, where have I got it here? You could dry brush under the eaves, a little bit of black. Instant shadow. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that very well, but it just puts a little bit of a shadow there. And you could do that up from the bottom as well. I'll just uh, dry brush them on there. Yeah. And then the, the roof of this building was all that uh, shiny red as well. I don't have a, a bare spot here for you, but I just took the building upside down, took my brush, put it in the creosote black and just spread it around that roof. And that's what gave the, uh, let me see if I can, Get that into a spot here. Maybe this side's better. Uh, the reason you do it upside down, then the the uh, the stain will go into the tab yeah, of the shingle. It just highlights. Highlight it. Yeah, highlights all those individual 
shingles. So that's what you can do quickly with a little plastic building. Rick, do you have a color that would work like you did the black on the coal car there? What about a color that would work on say uh, iron ore car or something of that nature? Um, yeah, uh, uh, basically there you're looking at grays and blacks. So uh, uh, the black would be really well, but uh, you'd have to put a lot of coats on it to make it as dark as you can, especially all the, the coal dust and so on being around it. Uh, what about iron ore, which is red? Um, yeah, just add uh, one of the reds into it. You, yeah, you just have to be careful. I think when you're starting to add it to plastic and we're gonna show you on the rocks as well that some of the colors we have won't exactly go on the same color that it would on wood, of course. So you just have to kind of play around with it a little bit um, and see which color is going to work for you. But like well, we've got- um, After you've weathered one of the cars, how long do you let it sit before you handle it? Uh, 10 minutes. Yeah. Alcohol, it, uh, it uh, dries really quick, okay? Um, yeah. That's why we can do many coats at once in one sitting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we wanted to try a couple other uh, products. Um, uh, one of the ones is Hydrocal. Uh, this is actually a Durban 90, uh, which is a, a very similar material. So Maureen's going to start to uh, get on this right now. Um, it soaks up a whole bunch, but this is how we do our rocks. I'm just using a light gray base here, um, putting it on straight from the bottle. I'm just going to do part of this. I'm not going to do the whole rock. I, I use this, um, we're doing a little end scale layout and I use this on, on all our rocks. I put the light gray on first. Um, again, as I was saying, it depends on the other colors. Like if you want to get brown, sometimes it's red that will give you the brown. So you have to just kind of try it out in a little inconspicuous spot first. And, uh, I'll show you some examples. We like when you put it on uh, uh, any of the plaster or the hydrocal because it really soaks it up and that means you have to buy two bottles instead of one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but I, I used um, acrylics as well, just in conjunction with it. Um, you know, when I want it to get kind of a rusty, uh, rusty color on the rocks, I skipped over to acrylics. So I, I kind of used a, a bunch of different uh, mediums for that. Um, so then you can take, I don't know, I've got that's light gray. And it's really best if you wait till it dries before you keep adding things, but you can take your black and maybe you can dry brush it if you want, especially into the areas where you, you've got uh, the cracks and you might want to see, you know, a little bit darker in those areas. And this, of course, is going to dry lighter, for sure. Some of it's chipping away on me here. <laughs> But it's kind of nice how it just oozes into all the crooks and crannies and it's pretty quick to to work with. And now I'm gonna try a little bit of I've got burnt sienna here just to see what kind of color we're gonna get out of this on top of there. I'm not sure. So I'm gonna dry brush a little bit of that. It's coming out a nice, a nice brown, reddish brown. Now, does this uh, uh, soak in enough that if it winds up chipping, you, no one notices that it's white? Yeah, on a small chip, yeah, it, it, you won't notice it. 
But uh, if it's a big, healthy chip, yeah. <laughs> and you might want to go back when it's all dry and take one of the pigments. I did that a lot on the layout that we, we did. I'm just going to try um, the white here, dry brushing a little bit, just on, on maybe some of the tips here. Use the flat of my brush. And find some of the areas that I might think there might be white. <laughs> Depending on what part of the country you want to model, you can add reds, browns, grays, greens. Yeah, so you just, you know, whatever suits your eye. This um this piece of rock just I wanted to show you different colors. It's already dry, so it's all set up. But just to show you this this color here that I'm pointing to was our Cordobon brown. It certainly doesn't look like Cordobon brown. And this one here is the burnt sienna. Came out really nice. That's what I used on this one just to uh, dry brush. And the bottom one here is yellow okra. So you just have to kind of play around with it and and. Um, you know, it, you really can't make a mistake. If you don't like it, just go back over top of it. And this is, uh, oh, it's not coming. My white again. Let me just tick off here and there. Yeah. So we wanted to try some other comedians and a lot of the uh, kits out there are vinyl based. So uh, we've experimented with the vinyls. So we got some all different samples of uh, vinyl and plastics and hydrocal. These little walls are just uh, plastic walls. And this one over here with the door and the window, that's how they started out. So what I did with these is I, I colored um, each of the individual stones, not each of them, but here and there, I put um, maybe yellow okra. I took a fine tip brush and put yellow okra in a couple of them and a barn red and another few and blue gray here and there, just kind of randomly went over it. And then when I let that dry, and then what I did, like, for example, on this one, I took my cement, which is a pigment, and I brushed the whole thing over uh, with the cement and then wiped it off with a sponge. So that um, highlighted all those mortar lines. This one here, I used the cement as well. I touched up the individual um, stones and then took the cement, just painted it right over top, just like uh, this. One of the points we want to make is that this doesn't take days and days. It only takes a few minutes and you can have a wall done. Yeah, just, just take it right over top of your little bricks that you've colored. It'll mute them a little bit, um, but, it, but it looks good, I think. And then just wipe it off. Just like that. It keeps the, the colors um, subtle in those stones, um, depending if that's the look you want, but I, I think it looks good. This one is um, a shale. I put the stones again and then took the shale and painted it over the whole wall and just wiped it off. Okay. Um, Rick, what's the difference between the stain and the pigment? The, um, the stains are uh, leather dye straight into the alcohol. And the pigments, um, we've added paint, a paint pigment into it so that you can put it over the dark color, okay? And we add colors in that too. It's just, just to make that uh, uh, adhere to the top surface of it instead of soaking in as much. Thanks. Here's another little piece of plastic. It's a little thicker than these uh, walls. Again, I just individually um, 
touched up some of those little stones or little bricks. And then I used the shale. I put the shale right across it and wiped it off with a paper towel. And that's how it came out. And it was that, it's that um, color there. That's how it started out. Hmm. Um, these ones, I think, Rick, is that Hydrocal? Yep. I, I think. Yep. This is Hydrocal. That was a little stone wall somebody gave me. And um, the same thing. I just, I touched up some of the individual stones there and then used my shale. I tend to kind of go to the shale. I don't know. I, I like the way the color the mortar turns out and um, just put the uh, shale over top of that and wipe it off with a, a paper towel as well. Comes out nice. Um, so uh, we could use this to, uh, to do that little plaster building that a certain person's going to do a build along? For sure. For sure. That would be great. Get the order in now. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we were doing this at a clinic uh, and uh, we were part of the WOD uh, from the NMRA. And um, the fellow behind us was doing foam. And we said, okay, let's see if it works on foam. This is the, the building foam. It's the, the blue stuff, isn't it? The pink, no, it's, it's the pink stuff. Pink, yeah. And my gosh, it, it, it adhered to it. Yeah. Well, this is our what our little layout is um, that we're just doing right now. The end scale is all the pink it's foam. All the pink foam. So yeah. I just took the, my black, my crucible black, actually, because I wanted it a little bit darker. And I did the whole, all the mountains in, in the black. And then I went back and um, put some of my lighter colors on, which you can do with the pigments for sure, uh, like a little bit of cottage white there. Um, some cement over here and some shale over here. Um, and you can take your acrylics as well if you want to add browns and whatnot. The browns that we have in the dyes don't seem to come out like a brown when you put it on the foam or any of the rocks. They seem to come out more like a gray, gray color. Um, if you use some of the reds, they come out more to be looking like brown. Just my, a little tip. My experience you. with foam is everything I've ever done over the years ends up in a pile of goo and, and you, you start all over again. Um, just quickly, another um, sample here is we've got some of Chooch's mater material, which is really nice. I really like it um, for walls. And um, we, we were just um, playing around with it at one of the, uh, I think it was- It was at was the uh, Model Railroad University. Okay, yeah. We do clinics there every year. Yeah, so it, it comes out, it starts out kind of like a beige color there. Um, and what I was doing is I just put my light gray on it. Um, here I tried a barn red. Uh, here was a burnt sienna. Um, I put shale and cement on these just to kind of show you the, the array of different colors that you can get. Um, this, one, this one here, you wouldn't think it, but it's Bordeaux. And Bordeaux is a very strong wine color and it, it didn't come out like that at all but it turned out okay. Yeah, so, you know, you just have to take it and try it. And, uh, uh, we have a question from uh, the Zoom chat from Craig Cassidy. Uh, how or where do you get the colors for your stains? Um, we're the first people that want them, okay? We take our, uh, okay, we want this color, so we develop it and, uh, uh, Maureen and that actually goes through a long process of uh, little samples, uh, maybe 50 samples, and each one is a different formula that you have to uh, keep track of. And then we, uh, by eliminating this one and this one, we come down to two or three samples and then, okay, this is the one we're going to go with. And, and if you're Irish and you wake up on March 17th, and I yeah. I came out with six colors. Six, were, six greens. They were all green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we take suggestions from customers, that's for sure. Like um, we have a, a color called West Side Red. Now, how that developed was that um, uh, uh, West Side Lumber had uh, an anniversary a couple years ago. And one of our dealers said, I want to match the color if I can. So we said, send us up a picture or send us a sample. So he actually took pieces off the building and sent them up to us. And we color matched them exactly. Now we can't legally call it West Side Lumber, 
uh, so we called it West Side Red. And uh, it's a dead color ma uh, match for it. Just like our uh, boxcar brown is a dead ringer for um, like CN and CP tungsten red. This was a, this is a piece of vinyl, right? Yep. It's, it's flexible vinyl. Um, so it's, it's got the uh, bricks um, etched in there and I just used the shale. Um, maybe I can try the cement here. You can just, um, it has black mortar. So I wanted to change that. And you can see the cement is a little bit, it's a little bit of a taupey color. You can see it's just like putting a, a coat of paint on it. Yeah. So you just put it on and wipe it off again. Another question from chat. Uh, what did you use on the pink insulation that caused it to melt? Because alcohol doesn't usually dissolve pink insulation. No, this was years ago before they come up with the pink insulation. It was uh, um, just your, your regular blue insulation. I forget what it was, but anyways, I made a whole bunch of tunnel portals and I took the dull pencil and I made the mortar lines just great. And then, <laughs> I did something bad and they all ended up with a big pile of goo. <laughs> <laughs> they so changed the formula um, to make it uh, where it doesn't gas out so much. I don't understand the details. I'm not a plastics engineer. Um, but nowadays, if you get pink or blue or green, that doesn't matter. What matters is the number that's on it, uh, which is a uh, a designation of how dense it is, therefore how strong. Uh, and the lower density stuff is more subject to uh, reaction from something. But no, the, unless it was something else in your dyes or something, you know, where you get your colors from that had a reaction, I don't think the, the, the alcohol would have done anything. No, if this was pre-alcohol. <laughs> I, I don't even remember what I was, this was about 15, 20 years ago, and I just don't remember what I did for it. That was the white styrofoam? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I th no, it wasn't no. the white. It was, the, oh. I think it was blue. Oh, okay. And it just didn't adhere at all. And then somebody yeah. said, if you coat it with latex, uh, that seals the, uh, so it, it loses its porosity, and then, uh, then you can put anything on it. But I just didn't go there. I was so upset with it. <laughs> Well, probably, I know. you know, you probably just use diosol or something like that, and I'm sure that that would have real in interesting impact. So, there's any any solvent like that in a solution, the mm -hmm. foam wouldn't last. Yeah, uh, it, 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 MEK would have just made slurry. Yeah. So, our point is that you can use it on virtually anything. We, um, on our website, we actually have a person who uh, does oil on canvas and they did a, a, a C scene. Uh, so the sea is blue, bluish, and the sky is blue. And they used our sky blue pigment uh, to do the sky and so on because it was cheaper to use our stuff for the mass instead of using oil paints for, for, the, for the whole picture. It's on our website, but use it on anything, like experiment first, but you'd be surprised at how many things it does adhere to, and it's quick. This is the whole point. I've seen some videos on uh, doing stone walls that take two weeks to get it the way you want. Well, we can do it in minutes. You want to show some of the stones up there? These ones? Yeah. yeah. These are some of the samples that we have used in the past. Oops. And if you find you don't like the color, start again tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? I think it's fantastic. I've learned a lot tonight. Thank you so very much, both of you. You're welcome. That's good. And we have a, a good few people uh, signed up for our uh, 
Build along. Build along. <laughs> I can't yeah. think of the words. Uh, this is good. Um, I, I think it starts May 22nd. Yeah. No, goes, I think yeah. And it goes uh, eight sessions of half an hour. And you, you, we take you right from opening the package to the finished product. As soon as I get my money. <laughs> and it's going to be great. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much, both of you. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Uh-huh.